Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the world. ST1 and SASE Summit. My name is Bhavna Bhatia and right now we're on our tech talk from VPN to ZTNE to SASE, the evolution of remote access. Well, right now we're joined by Boaz Abigad, Cato Networks Director, Product Marketing. Well, Boaz has more than 15 years of product leadership experience. His expertise is in networking and security space where he has led product management go to market and strategic planning and successfully introduced numerous products and services to the global market. Well, with this, I humbly invite now Boaz on your screen and stage. Boaz, with this, the stage and screen is all yours. It's an absolute delight to have you today. Thank you very much, Lavana. It's great to be here. Um, so I will share my screen. Hello, everyone, and hope you'll be able to see my screen now. Yes, we can. Over to you. Excellent. Great. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. We will be talking about the evolution of remote access and the path from uh, VPN to ZTNA to SASE. VPNs have been the go-to technology for remote access for the last 25 years. When the COVID pandemic hit and the entire industry shifted to working from home, it was clear that there is a need for a better solution. Enterprises started adopting remote access solutions such as software defined perimeter, SDP, and zero trust network access, ZTNA. The next phase in the evolution is believed to be the secure access service edge or SASE. SASE isn't a replacement of SDP or ZTNA, but rather, a new architecture which converges remote access into a wider, more holistic approach. But let's get started in the beginning. What's wrong with VPNs? VPNs use a castle and mode approach where an authenticated user is granted access to the entire data center. If, for example, enterprise application one, EA1 in, in our chart here, is an internal HR department application and John works for R&D, we don't want to enable John to access it. Secondly, VPNs don't differentiate between user types. For example, direct employees, contract workers, suppliers, and so on. We would like to limit contract workers, for example, to a need to access only policy. Third, the shift to cloud. Organizations are increasingly migrating their applications to cloud platforms, such as AWS and Azure. Since VPNs are typically deployed at the ingress point to the data center, the only way we're able to authenticate remote users is by backhauling their traffic to the data center and only then forward it to the cloud application. This adds latency, which impacts application performance and turns the VPN into a bottleneck. Fourth, a known limitation of VPNs is that they don't scale well. They require VPN concentrators, which don't aggregate efficiently and can become very costly. So how do we address these limitations? The need for a remote access solution, which addresses the shortcomings of VPNs, urged the industry to produce solutions such as the SDP. The SDP framework was uh, developed by the Cloud Security Alliance with the goal of controlling access to resources based on identity. The zero trust concept was developed by Forrester Research and remote access solutions which rely on zero trust are referred to as zero trust network access or ZTNA. For the purpose of this discussion, we will use these terms interchangeably. The concept of, context, the concept of identity and context has several aspects to it, such as user type. Is it an employee, contract worker, supplier, and so on? For internal employees, there are also several options for segmenting them, such as by department, HR, sales, by geolocation, and other criteria. Identity also depends on the client type. Is it laptop, mobile, and location type? Is the user connecting from the branch office or from a remote location? Time-based restrictions may also be defined, such as working hours only and only during the work week. Each application has an explicit definition of which users may access it. When a user wishes to access an application, it first reaches the SDP controller. 
the SDP controller is responsible for authenticating the user. And then based on the established user's identity and context and the application's defined access policy, decides whether to authorize access. The starting point is that no user may access any application or resource. This is where the zero trust concept comes into play. Access is granted only within when the identity and context match an explicitly defined policy. This is in stark contrast to how a VPN works. An additional principle of ZTNA is that external IP addresses of applications and resources are not exposed. There is no way to access them without authenticating with the SDP controller first. SDP is a great solution for managing remote employee access. However, when we take a holistic view of an enterprise's complete access management requirements, we see that SDP is only a single component of the full solution. Let's take a look at a typical enterprise's access control flows. We need to manage access to applications in the corporate data center, as well as application hosted in public cloud, such as AWS and Azure. SaaS applications, such as Office 365 and Salesforce, and also the public web. John, for example, our employee, sometimes works from the company's headquarters. Sometimes he works from a branch office and sometimes remotely from home. When John is working from home, he will always be routed through the SDP solution. For accessing applications in the on-prem data center, he will need to pass through the uh, data center firewall. When accessing an app in the cloud data center, he'll be routed via the cloud firewall. And when accessing a SaaS application, he'll be routed through the CASB solution. And when accessing the public internet, it will be routed through the secure web gateway. When John is working from the headquarters of one of the branch offices, he will not be passing through the SDP. So all the access policies configured for Jack in the SDP need to be defined in other products again, the data center, for the data center firewall, the cloud firewall, CASB, and secure web gateway. So we have one John, multiple products, multiple flows, multiple configurations. This is complicated, inconsistent, error prone, and therefore unsecure. So how do we solve this complexity? We need a simple solution that is coherent, unified, and can provide secure access to any service from any user at any edge. What we need is essentially SASE. Gardner, in the Market Guide for Secure Trust Network Access, which is the, uh, which was published last year, emphasized the importance of implementing ZTNA as part of SASE. They say that security and risk management leaders should pilot ZTNA projects as part of a SASE strategy. In their suggested evaluation criteria, Gartner urged IT leaders to check whether potential vendors offer additional SASE components such as Secure Web Gateway, CASB, and Firewall as a Service. Garza also mentions SD-WAN in this list, which might seem unrelated to remote access, and we will touch on this point again shortly. So what is a remote access solution, which is part of the SASE service offer us? It is, in fact, exactly what we're looking for. Converge unified access management covering all users on all edges in all applications in all locations. It enables us to define simple and coherent policies at the user and application level. For example, John has access to application X. No matter where John will connect from, the office, his home, or any other location, he will be granted access to application X wherever it is deployed at the on-prem data center, cloud data center, SaaS provider, or the public internet. No need for multiple definitions and multiple products to cover John's access policies. It's all done once with a single configuration in a single pane of glass management console. Any defined policy will be enforced using the relevant modules, the SDP, Next Generation Firewall, CASB, and Secure Gateway. The solution covers all device types, including manage, managed, unmanaged, voice over IP, IoT endpoints, and access management, um, it is a critical and important component of an enterprise network security. However, it is not uh, the full solution. It is only part of the full solution that we actually need. In order to provide, to provide complete protection, we need to add advanced security capabilities, such as an intrusion prevention system, IPS, and next generation anti-malware. 
Beyond security, we need to also consider user experience and ensure our application's performance by using solutions such as SD-WAN and a private backbone. The digital transformation has brought new requirements for additional solutions beyond access management. SD-WAN to address the high cost rigidity and capacity constraints of MPLS, cloud acceleration and security to support cloud access, branch security and a global backbone for distributed locations, and network security for on-premises data centers and for protecting east-west traffic. New requirements, new products, complicated. Gardner says the solution for avoiding this high complexity is convergence. Convergence of the access modules we discuss together with networking and advanced security capabilities. In the diagram, we can see the access management modules we mentioned in red. When converged with SD-WAN and additional network security modules, enterprises can achieve the complete security coverage and optimized user experience they're looking for. As we mentioned in the beginning, um, SASE isn't a solution which replaces the modules we see here. SASE rather is a new and revolutionary network architecture which, which is designed to converge all of the critical components required to optimize and secure the modern digital enterprise. This is where SASE potential uh, is fully unleashed to provide a highly secure and optimized experience for all users on all edges and to all applications on all occasions. SASE network layer includes SD-WAN capabilities and uh, a network of globally distributed POPs to enable high quality of service and low latency application delivery. SASE security layer provides full protection to all traffic and works in tandem with unified access layer to implement the defined security policies on a per user, per context, and per resource level. To insert to ensure perfect orchestration of all the components, the entire SASE service is managed by a unified single pane of glass management system. Let's take a look at Cato SASE Cloud to get a more in-depth view of a complete SASE service. At the core is a global private backbone of POPs running a converged software stack. The POPs are interconnected with redundant tier one providers that provide consistent and predictable long haul latency, jitter, and packet loss. The POP software selects the best route across providers for maximum uptime and best end-to-end -end performance. This design offers an immediate improvement in network quality over the unpredicted public internet and significant cost reduction when compared to MPLS. For network processing, Cato calculates the best routes globally for every packet over the best performing provider. This also creates high resiliency in case of provider uh, degradation or outage. Cato accelerates WAN traffic by maximizing bandwidth for activities such as file downloads and voice calls. And it optimizes cloud access by routing application specific traffic to the POP closest to the cloud destination. Cato then inspects packets for security. All traffic, including encrypted traffic, is inspected by multiple security engines. This includes a next generation firewall with application awareness, secure web gateway with URL filtering, and advanced threat prevention with next generation anti-malware and IPS. Security policies apply to all resources, including physical locations, cloud locations, and mobile users. Customers connect all network edges to the cloud network using secure tunnels. Physical locations connect via the Cato socket as WAN device. The Cato socket manages multiple last mile connections in active active mode and directs traffic to the best path based on underlying link behavior. The socket also applies quality of service prioritization based on application and user awareness. And it protects critical apps like voice against packet loss. Cato provides a broad set of policies out of the box that optimize traffic to the most common requirements with the ability to configure highly granular policies for specific needs. Cato sockets also support site-to-site -site MPLS and internet connections. So accommodating a wide range of use cases. 
Combining Cato's edge SD-WAN capabilities for last mile optimization with Cato's backbone middle mile optimizations allows customers to augment and replace MPLS and deliver optimal service to all locations globally. Beyond physical locations, um, Cato uh, connects um, remote users using an SDP client or a browser to securely connect any WAN or cloud application from laptops, tablets, and smartphones. The user dynamically connects to the nearest pop as they move between different locations. The traffic is then optimized and secured and sent over the backbone to any destination. Cloud data centers are connected using an IPsec tunnel from the Cato cloud or using a Cato virtual socket. This makes the cloud data center an integral part of the network and its traffic benefits from all the network optimization and security controls. For public cloud applications, no integration is required. Application specific traffic from any edge is automatically detected. Traffic can be sent based on a network rule to the pop closest to the cloud instance serving their business. Finally, Cato offers full visibility and control via a flexible management model. A self-service console is available for customers to configure all policies and access detailed analytics and events. Cato and its partners can also deliver fully managed service for customers who want this. The Cato SASE Cloud was built using a modular software architecture, which enables easily adding new capabilities and ensuring the service is future-proof. So what is the way forward? Solving one problem at a time is how complexity got out of control. Taking a platform approach to your WAN transformation will address the challenges of today and prepare you for the opportunities of tomorrow. Cato, the world's first SASE platform, was built from the ground up to be the network for whatever's next. So, this, is, this concludes the session. Uh, uh, thank you all for listening. If there are any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask and, and send them over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Boris, for joining us and being a part of